So I'm back in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, this time I'm in Portland for PDX LAN, just one week after my Seattle trip. PDX LAN is a pretty chill event, I think. Uh, we got in a couple days ago to set up the booth and we got most of it set up and had some extra time to go around the city. And my sister specifically requested that I go check out this uh, handmade ceramic store called Notary Ceramics. And it's, uh, we're staying in downtown Portland and I think it's south of downtown Portland about another five miles or so but as we were driving to Notary Ceramics there was a store next to it that had a sign out that said vintage and records on it and that immediately piqued my interest because um, I recently bought like a vinyl record player but all the vinyls I've been buying have been produced uh, relatively recently I would say in the past year so I went in to check out the, the vintage store, this antique store, and I actually picked up a few vinyls from there. This is music that I don't normally listen to, but I wanted to hear and experience what, I guess, older or antique uh, vinyls sounded like. Um, and so this isn't typically the music that I listen to, but these are names that I recognize. So like Bruce Springsteen, Born to Run, Jimi Hendrix Experience, Smash Hits, Fleetwood Mac, Penguin, Penguin? Penguin. The last one that I got was the Grease soundtrack. But what I'm most excited about was this camera, which was maybe one of the biggest impulse buys that I've had in recent years, or recent memory. I picked up this Roloflex. This cost $900. Uh, <laughs> I've seen this camera, or this type of camera for a long time. Like, I really like shooting with my Canon AE-1, um, and I think it's a, it's a very different mindset when you have to shoot on film. I believe this is a medium format camera. I could be completely wrong, um, but according to the shop, this one works perfectly. Uh, came with a roll of film. Hopefully I could get some shots in. Uh, in, in Portland with this, use up that film and get it developed once I'm back in LA. But I really don't know how to use this. Um, I just learned how to uh, open the <coughs> open the back to, to load the film in, but I have no idea how to load this film in. And I still haven't quite figured out how to <laughs> remove this lens cap. Like I can flip this up, right? but I don't know if I'm supposed to remove it. You set your, uh, your film speed, the ASA. I think this is also the focusing ring. Uh, and I believe this is to, to wind it. And uh, I think this is the shutter because, oh, okay. Yeah, so this has to be the shutter because uh, when I pull this lever back, it, it locked it into, the put, into place. So that seems like it's very similar to the AE-1 that I have. This dial over here controls the shutter speed, but it's also turning the aperture for some reason. On the back, there's like a chart of settings for different scenarios. So I uh, haven't quite deciphered it. Uh, hopefully I can figure this out before I leave. Hopefully it still works. So it's been a couple of months since I impulse bought this camera in Portland um, and you know shooting with this camera has been a whole new experience for me. It's presented a lot of new challenges. Uh, one thing is that the image that you see through the optical viewfinder is uh, inverted horizontally. So if you look left, the image moves right and vice versa. So that's been, uh, that's still something that I'm trying to get used to when I'm shooting with this camera. I walked around downtown Portland on the last day that we were there and uh, took a few shots and uh, definitely uh, because of the inverse nature of the, the camera, a lot of my shots weren't framed properly. So, you know, if I tried to focus on uh, very horizontal or vertical lines, um, I was trying to uh, frame it up so it would be parallel with the edge of the image, but there are uh, a couple shots just came out a little bit crooked or a lot crooked. Uh, so it wasn't that perfect square image that I was able to get in camera right away. And obviously because you're looking down at the viewfinder from, from the top like this, uh, this limits the uh, photos that you could take versus if you were to look straight through to the back like how 
uh, most cameras are today. Because this camera forces me to slow down and really think about each shot, um, it really it really changes the pace of how I shoot photos. Because a lot of what I do for work is I have to be very efficient with creating product photos or um, social media images and I have to turn them out as efficiently, as quickly as possible while maintaining like a decent enough quality. Obviously, going through something like that really can burn someone out. Having something like this, it's a reminder that, you know, why I first got into photography and like how fun it can be. I'm super happy that I picked up this, this camera. Yeah, this was a whole new experience. Um, I had no idea if the shots that I, came, uh, that I took came out well or not. It's really fun. So I can't wait to shoot with this more. I've actually already shot a ton more uh, rolls. Uh, I've actually accidentally um, destroyed a couple rolls by accident. I think I didn't load the film properly or it, like, it got jammed when I was trying to advance the film. So hopefully the camera's still okay. Hopefully I didn't break it because uh, that'd be really, really sad. So yeah, if you're like me and you've been feeling pretty discouraged or you've hit a wall with photography, um, just try, I would say, just try a new challenge, try something new. Try shooting in a setting where if it's a different pace than what you're uh, normally used to shooting. It helped me, maybe it'll help you, you know, so. Anyways, uh, can't wait to get these developed and see what these images turn out to be. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, if you guys sat through all that, you know, thank you for watching. And uh, hopefully I do this more often where I get more practice in and can have a better outfit prepared. <laughs>